Robert Dad. Look at this. Hmm? I can use magic. You can. Years passed like that. Richard grew up fast, and he was already over years old. Look. Fireball. Then, flames appeared in Richard's hand. Robert's eyes widened. It was rare for a year old to use magic. Moreover, Robert had never taught Richard any magic. How did you learn magic? I learned from a book on Dad's desk. Desk? Magic learned on his own. Robert remembered his own childhood. He too had learned magic on his own. Seeing that Robert didn't say anything, Richard's expression soared. He had touched Dad's desk without permission. That. Touching Dad's desk was. Just as Richard was about to apologize to Robert, Richard, you're a genius. Robert smiled brightly and ruffled Richard's hair. Richard beamed at Robert's praise. Yeah. I'm a genius. But still. You shouldn't touch Dad's desk carelessly. There are many dangerous things, okay? I understand. With that, Robert stood up. It was time for Richard to go to bed. Richard lay in bed, covered himself with a blanket, and spoke. Dad. When I grow up. I want to be your apprentice. Apprentice. Yeah. I want to be a wizard like you. I don't think that's a very good idea. The magic Robert used was dark magic. The perception of dark magic wasn't very good among the public. Even though Livian did a lot to change that perception, it couldn't change overnight. I'm going to be a wizard like Dad. Let's talk about that later. For now, Robert dodged the topic. He's still young. Hopefully, he'll change his mind later. And now go to sleep. Okay, Dad, sleep well too. Robert then put Richard to sleep and walked down to the basement of the mansion. It's almost finished. Research on resurrection magic. The research was nearing completion. In fact, the research on the magic itself was finished. But there was a lack of mana to be infused. How much mana stone is needed? No matter how expensive the mana stone inserted, the magic did not activate. The magic just greedily consumed the mana stones without any change. Sigh. Robert sighed and continued with his research. The next day, Thump Robert, dozing off, banged his head on the desk. Seeing Robert's state, Livian looked worried. Robert, you seem to be in bad shape these days, ah? Uh. It was no wonder he wasn't well. Researching necromancy at night and working as a royal wizard during the day, Livian kept an eye on Robert. Robert, come outside for a moment, understood. Livian stepped outside with Robert and lit a cigarette. Robert then took a cigarette out of his pocket as well. Didn't you tell Richard you quit smoking? How can I quit overnight? It's a promise you made to your son, isn't it? That's why I don't smoke in front of him. I see. Anyway. What have you been up to these days? What do you mean? I've been hearing things. You've been visiting Ephomos more frequently. Upon hearing this, Robert's expression hardened. Robert, I know what you're doing. Livian said this and sighed. I know you miss Elena deeply, but you shouldn't resort to necromancy. Think about why the Empire has banned necromancy. It's not magic that creates miracles. It defies the natural order. I understand. I believe you'll make the right decision. Livian said this and went back into the tower alone. Robert watched Livian's back and muttered quietly, I'm sorry, master. He bowed his head in the direction Livian had gone. Robert extinguished his cigarette and went inside the tower. Are you on leave? Yeah, I'm going to take a short break. So, um, I have plenty of leave left. Just use that, understood? But, shouldn't you at least inform Lord Livian? It's fine. Fine. I'll handle it. Understood. With that, Robert headed to Aphomos. I've almost finished my research. But why isn't it working? It should work according to the theory. You know why. Lord Robert, it's because there's not enough mana. Not enough mana. I'm using the highest quality mana stones. Can a human life be equivalent to a mana stone? So, what should I do? The necromancer stroked his chin and stood up. Alright. 
I'll give you our treasure. It's because you've helped with the research. Treasure. The necromancer then opened a safe in the laboratory. This is the mana stone. A mana stone filled with tremendous mana. It contained more mana than the highest quality mana stone. Where did this come from? I can't tell you that. Robert stared intently at the necromancer. Even if you look at me like that. I can't tell you. I would die. Alright. I won't ask if you're giving it to me. Robert accepted the mana stone from the necromancer. Then I'll come back later. Yes, please be careful. Robert returned to his mansion with the mana stone given by the necromancer. Dad. Richard's eyes widened when he saw Robert. It wasn't the usual time for Robert to return. Richard, puzzled but happy, exclaimed, Dad. What's happening? At this time. Robert smiled. Richard, Dad took some time off. Really? So you'll play with me? Robert hesitated for a moment, fidgeting with the mana stone in his pocket. Pocket. However, he pushed aside his concerns. Yes, let's enjoy today to the fullest. Really? Yes, what shall we play? Robert began to play wholeheartedly with Richard. They played until sunset, and as it turned to evening, Richard's eyes began to droop. Richard, should we go to bed now? When? I want to play more with Dad. Dad took a longer leave. So we have tomorrow too. Let's play again tomorrow. Really? Really, with that, Richard dashed into his bedroom. Peeking out from the door, Richard said, Then I'll go to bed early and play with Dad from tomorrow morning. Robert laughed. All right. Let's play to our heart's content from tomorrow morning. Okay. Good night, Dad. Watching Richard enter the bedroom, Robert smiled but then his expression turned serious. He sighed deeply, reaching into his pocket to look at the mana stone he had received earlier. Robert then headed to the mansion's basement. A huge magic circle laid out in the basement was the result of Robert's research. Please, Elena. Robert placed the mana stone at the center of the magic circle. Suddenly, the magic circle began to emit a strong light. The circle, which hadn't moved even with the highest quality mana stone, finally activated. Tears started to well up in Robert's eyes as he watched the magic circle move. Finally, he could see Elena. Bring back Elena's form. Form. However, things didn't go as smoothly as expected. The magic circle suddenly began to vibrate intensely. What's that? Feeling something was wrong, Robert grabbed onto the wall. A strong pressure emanated from the magic circle. Suddenly, a black object started to emerge, looking like an arm. Then, a massive mouth appeared. The arm began to grab everything around, indiscriminately seizing desks, chairs, and magical tools, and feeding them into the mouth-like part. What the? Robert was shocked. The magic circle started to devour everything. It was hard to understand what was happening. Then, the black arm approached Robert. Ulf. Behemoth. With a roar, Robert quickly summoned Behemoth and cut down the arm trying to grab him. It has to stop. Something was clearly wrong. Despite following the theory exactly, the outcome was bizarrely unexpected. Ugh. It must stop. Robert responded to the arm with dark magic as best as he could, but he had no idea how to stop the magic. I have to destroy it. It was not the time to think about research materials or anything else. Leaving this magic unchecked could endanger the mansion. And possibly Richard. Robert poured all his mana into trying to destroy the magic circle. That's when he was focusing. Dad. Ah. Richard appeared at the door. What's this? Richard. No. Run away. Then the black arm grabbed Richard. Ah. Robert let out a cry. He had to sever that arm. Richard. Richard. Those who defy the will of the gods. Robert was solely focused on destroying the magic circle. They sent, then, a black object appeared behind Robert, a demon. demon. He had summoned a demon into his own body. Protect. Richard. Dad. The black arm tried to swallow Richard, and the demon summoned behind Robert tried to stop it. The magic circle put Richard into its mouth. 
and the demon thrust its arm directly into the circle, then a bright light appeared, boom. With a huge explosion, the black object slowly disappeared, and Robert rushed to the center of the magic circle. Richard. Richard. Breathlessly, Robert searched for Richard in the aftermath of the explosion, then, crying came from the center of the magic circle. Dad. It hurts. It hurts. It was Richard, screaming in pain. Robert ran towards him. Richard had severe injuries. Richard. It's okay. It will be okay. Dad. It hurts so much. Tears came to Robert's eyes as Richard cried out in pain. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sorry. Why are you sorry? Dad. Don't cry. Dad. Richard said to Robert through tears. Dad. Don't cry. Don't cry. Ah. Uh. Right, Richard, stay, stay with me. Right, Richard. Robert shouted at Richard, who was losing consciousness, however. Richard could no longer say anything. Ah. Uh. Right, Richard. Richard. Bang. As Robert was crying out Richard's name, a man entered from behind. Robert. What's happened here? What's this vibration? It was Livian. Livian was shouting at Robert and then saw Richard in his arms. Robert, what on earth have you done? Robert. Livian yelled loudly at Robert. Didn't I explicitly tell you not to do it? Necromancy. Necromancy. At the shouting, Robert turned around. My master. Livian said with an angry face, No, you are no longer my disciple. Then, soldiers entered from behind Livian. What's going on here? This is. The soldiers looked around and asked Livian, Take him away, him. But he's a royal wizard. He is no longer a royal wizard. Livian looked at Robert with a murderous glare. He's just a criminal who used necromancy. Livian took Richard from his arms and had Robert taken away. That was the last time Robert saw Livian. Robert was imprisoned in a dungeon. Then, one day, he was released from it. What is this? By the Emperor's command. You have contributed much to the Empire. So you are released, however. You are stripped of your title as a royal wizard and any honorary positions given by the Empire. Instead, you are granted freedom to atone for your sins. Freedom. The soldiers threw Robert outside and returned to the dungeon. Robert looked up at the sky. He had no idea what to do next. Elena was dead, Richard was dead, and he was abandoned by Livian. And he aimlessly wandered the battlefield, just to survive or rather, to forget the deeds he had committed. He kept fighting. One day, after a battle, he took out a cigarette from his pocket. Robert stared at the cigarette, then crumpled it. He wondered what he was doing. What all this was for? What are you doing, Robert? A voice was heard. Robert, looking at the crumpled cigarette, raised his head then. He saw a middle-aged man. man. Despite being aged and wrinkled, he recognized him. Cromwell. What are you doing, Robert? I. Whack Cromwell clenched his fist and struck Robert's face. Robert fell to the ground and looked up at Cromwell. Is this what you wanted? Is this what Elena wanted? Do you think Richard wanted to see you like this? Get a grip. Robert. Cromwell. Isn't it time you came to your senses? It's been years, five years since Richard died, and yet, I don't know what I should do now, what I want, I, I, Cromwell stared at Robert, then he extended his hand, come to the academy, what, Robert looked incredulous, come to the academy, that's ridiculous, I've already got permission from Principal McDowell, so, Stop arguing and come to the academy. Robert was dragged by Cromwell to the academy. He ended up taking a position as a professor at the academy. Robert worked there, if only to honor the man who brought him, Cromwell. 
Even when random thoughts surfaced or strange feelings arose, he focused solely on his work. During his years as a professor, Robert met Rudy. Three translations with the men a stone about to explode and Vendor Wood thrown far away. There sat Rudy, powerless and slumped. Robert looked around at them. He had seen this situation before. I have shown you both the past and the future. Now, what is your choice? It was something Saint Haruna had told him. She had shown him both his past and future. In the past, he had bid farewell to his wife with tears, sent off his son with screams of agony, and let go of his master without a word. Robert had been a poor husband, a poor father, a poor disciple. Prudy, yet, at the very least, you were my best disciple. He wanted to be the best master. Professor. Robert walked forward. Behind him, a demon appeared. Robert said to the demon, destroy this man a stone. What's the price? My life, understood. Rudy's eyes widened. Professor. Rudy tried to get up and run towards Robert. Robert slightly turned his head to look at Rudy. Robert was smiling brighter than ever before. Take care, Rudy. Thank you.